Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I'm back with another fun video where I'm going to show you how to unlock the chainsaw from COD Ghost in Modern Warfare 3, except this one might actually be better because it has even tighter hipfire spread and inconsistently impressive range. Basically what we're going to be doing today is taking advantage of the tactical stance in the game that was probably originally put in there for zombies in third person, but ported over for other uses, and specifically with light machine guns because they have giant mags, and one of the weapons has a unique conversion kit that makes it even better. This might be one of the very few proper uses for tactical stance in the game, and I do want to say what you're about to see here today is not my final form. I can get much, much stronger as I level up and unlock aftermarket parts, and I don't even have stalker boots yet, which would make this even deadlier. All right, so let me show you how I built this thing and why. First of all, you're going to equip the Puli Mignot 762 LMG, which I cannot pronounce at all, you will have needed to unlock the bullpup conversion kit here, which does a tremendous amount of things for your rate of fire, movement speed, and most importantly, that tax stance spread. So we're going to go ahead and equip that. From the basic attachments, your options aren't that great to boost anything else when it comes to stock. You can see that we do have exactly one stock on the default weapon that boosts the hip fire and tax stance spread, not by a lot. We're gonna go down here to the rear grip and it's kind of the same thing if I can find it. I think there's exactly one. Yes, the true tack grip. Then one surprising attachment, if you can find it, the it's called the Bruin Warrior Grip. Uh, you'll see there's the VX Pineapple. It gives you an 18% boost. The Bruin Warrior Grip is 26. So we're gonna go with that. And there are other attachments. There are lasers that I can put on here that tighten that up a little bit more. But people have a tendency to see the laser and know I'm coming and not walk into the death race. So for simplicity, I just went with the suppressor that gives us a little bit of extra bullet velocity and damage range and keeps us off the radar because you're going to be spraying this thing like crazy and you don't want to attract a whole lot of attention. Now, there are some interesting attachments in here. If I can scroll all the way down, there's this breacher device that gives you a pretty impressive benefit to your attack stance spread. I unfortunately don't have it unlocked. There's better lasers. There's a lot of stuff like that, but you're gonna have to grind for aftermarket parts. This is probably as good as you're gonna get with the base weapon unlocks. One thing you may have noticed in that setup is that there are a ton of aftermarket parts which I do not have unlocked. It's very difficult for me to grind this game. And on top of that, you often have to do daily challenges to unlock those parts. I know that there is a breacher device that greatly increases tax stance. I know there's a couple of lasers that do it. I know there's a couple of stocks that make that mobility really crazy, but I haven't been able to get all of them yet. Stalker boots as well. So there's a lot of stuff that you could do to make this even tighter and even deadlier. And I think at some point, it might turn into something more similar to the EM-1 laser rifle from Advanced Warfare, which if you remember had horrible recoil, but oddly tight hip fire that fried everybody at super long ranges. But for now, it behaves a lot more like the original chainsaw from COD Ghost, or more recently used in Warzone, and it's probably a little bit worse up close because of the lower rate of fire, but a little bit better at long range because the tax stance tightness is incredibly tight on this particular weapon. Uh, the overall result at the end of the day, what you get is a decent time to kill, not a really great one, but a consistent one over long range, and a lot of randomness because you're doing hip fire. Now up close, that's not gonna be as impactful, but at long range, you're definitely gonna be missing some of those hip tire shots. Even though it's going to stay relatively accurate and probably feel pretty good, you're gonna have high mobility while shooting, at least in terms of strafing, especially if you've unlocked the stalker boots. But your mobility when sliding or cornering or trying to jump shot or something like that is gonna be really, really slow. So not a lot of knee sliding, not a lot of jump shots around corners. If you're using this weapon, you really just kind of need to pick a head glitch and kind of strafe back and forth and use it like a mobile LMG to hose people. And one thing that is kind of nice is that you'll never have to fully aim down sights. So your vision is almost perfectly clear the entire time. It's like playing Counter-Strike or Overwatch or something like that. It's just all hip fire. And that is a godsend because I'm going to tell you, this LMG will kick up to the moon and a lot of the other weapons have some uh, kick to them that's really frustrating when you hit, get hit and take flinch and suddenly the barrel of the gun is blocking your enemy. You'll probably never have that happen with the pulley knot. Today's sponsor is Gamer Advantage Glasses, which are these black glasses that you see me wear in almost every single video on the channel, almost all of my social media posts. 
I use these pretty much anytime I'm on the computer and I use them every single day. And since it's Thanksgiving week, Gamer Advantage is doing a Black Friday sale all week long, well into Cyber Monday, 25% off site-wide as you can see here. And they're doing flash sales every day. So I just scroll down, you can see uh, this one is $32 off, $25 off, $40 off, and then this coupon stacks on top. So if you wanted to get discount gaming glasses, now is a fantastic time to do it. I'm going to click on these. I just want to see what these look like. <laughs> this is a totally different color scheme than what I've got. Uh, I've enjoyed their glasses for a long time. I have a couple of different pair. I actually put links down there in the description to full review videos if you want to check it out. And the good news is that if you use code DRIFTER, my discount code will stack with this 25% off depending on the day and the product, getting you between 35 and 50% off. And even better than that, since gamer advantages do come in prescription, you can get your insurance to pay for it. And I can still get the referral fee and nobody spends any money. Isn't that great? When it comes to opinions, I think you're downright filthy in close quarters combat, especially in the higher player count, crazier respawn modes where people tend to cluster up and run through areas together. And I think it's a barely reasonable weapon at the end of the day because it's not a truly competitive weapon. It's not going to hold you out in these hyper competitive MLG uh, certified lobbies where everybody's running around with their CDL sweat skins that's not going to be a good place for this. However, it's very fun in low skill lobbies and it's very fun in medium skill lobbies, but once you start hitting medium high, things start getting a lot harder because people are going to be using head glitches, they're going to be going for proper picks, they're not gonna be showing a whole lot of body. This gun really works in modes where there's a lot of flesh being exposed around objectives, rust being fantastic. I must have tried to match 40 times and couldn't get a single freaking game of rust somehow which is very frustrating because that's the very best place in the world for this weapon. Pretty good in war mode when people cluster up. And I also think it's definitely better on PC than it is on console because on PC, you just don't have aim assist, period, right? And a lot of people play with high sensitivity mice so they can spin around and snap on targets uh, or at least so that they can just fully 180 people, right? Uh, on console, you tend to rely more on the aim assist. You tend to play a little bit lower on the sensitivity because you want to be able to make those micro adjustments with a stick. And I find that to be harder to do with this particular setup. Oh, and of course, the aim assist. You don't get any aim assist uh, for most ranges with this on console, like because it's still technically a hip fire. It really messes with that auto aim and aim assist range. So the goal of this class isn't necessarily to be good at Modern Warfare 3. It's to have fun with the game and Modern Warfare 3 seems more than anything else designed to be fun, so I'm not trying to take it very seriously. Lord knows everybody else in my lobby might be taking it seriously. I swear they're all planning to go pro, uh, but I'm just trying to goof around, have fun, entertain myself, and I hope that more of you choose to do the same. I do want to say that this has an interesting use case in zombies. Zombies operates, uh, well, you can do first or third. A lot of people enjoy doing the third person perspective. And I'm reasonably confident that the tax stance is the tighter ADS that happens when the character was in third person perspective in other games. And all they did is just add like a first person animation for it. So it actually works really well in third person and it allows you a really high degree of mobility while shooting hordes of zombies at, at least in zombies mode, reasonable accuracy with a huge magazine on your weapon. So I think that this definitely has a use case there. I personally haven't tried it, but I'm curious to see what all of you would say after you try it out. And now near the end of the commentary, I wanna take a moment to talk about the health of the game. There are lots of gamers still complaining about skill-based matchmaking and rightfully so, you're literally watching me struggle through some of the gameplay right here. And I also noticed that player count for this game is lower than expected, at least according to Steam Charts. And Steam Charts monitors the COD HQ, which is Modern Warfare 2, Warzone, and now Modern Warfare 3. Yet player numbers, at least on the COD HQ, are lower than they were for the COD HQ for Modern Warfare 2 this time of year by quite a lot. And they're about, they're like barely higher than Modern Warfare 2 this summer, which is not very promising. I assume it's not tremendously better on console or there's some sort of correlation there. But at the end of the day, there seem to be less people playing Modern Warfare 3. And if player counts are low, then the people that are playing Modern Warfare 3 are more likely to be like hardcore, dedicated, longtime COD veterans, which means that skews the distribution of the normal curve of skill quite a bit to the right, which would be higher skill. So basically, 
uh, if there are <laughs> less players and a higher percentage of players that are good, that means the average for skill has been moved and higher skill matching for everybody all around. Meaning medium skill levels in Modern Warfare 3 probably play a little bit more like high or medium high skill in Modern Warfare 2. And that's just sort of a numbers problem. Moving along, I do wanna say that season one is looking promising. I haven't been doing a whole ton of news videos about that. I'm mostly excited to play Urzikstan and Warzone. Warzone is the number one thing that I'm most excited for in this game. That's really what I wanna get my hands on. Getting new multiplayer map maps is nice too. Not gonna to complain about that, but but I do want to say that I'm in the mood for some new new. I really would like some brand new never before played map, some kind of new unique experience and not a nostalgic one. But I guess I'll just be waiting for a little bit. Guys, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe. Drifter out.